What's up guys, my name is Khan, and we're back today with more Scrap Mechanica. Today we're doing some more best builds. These are creations that you guys have submitted on my Discord server. It's fantastic. You guys come up with some crazy stuff. And of course, we've got a lot of piston engines today. So you guys got to make sure you keep those comments coming. Let me know what you want to see in Scrap Mechanic. And of course, hit that like button and let's jump right into the first build. So the first creation I want to look at is a s prob octo piston powered plane by blue flame uh this is actually just ridiculous i've made a piston powered plane once before um i don't know how it wasn't really good it didn't go very fast uh oh that prop looks that prop looks busted hold on do i just put it on the lift there we go perfect all right and uh what do we got so one is roll that way two is roll that way three is oh god a function thing i don't want to do that four oh my god those piston engines are great Little, does it fly though? Okay, like we're. Okay, we're 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 cruising. Did can we? Oh, there we go. We're up. Holy cow, that's so smooth. Wow. The landing gear even auto retract too. We gotta get some height though. This thing doesn't have a crazy fast climb rate. Unbelievable though. Look at that. Two piston engines. That's all it is. Two tiny little three-cylinder piston engines, and it's enough to spin these things super quick. And it looks like those piston engines don't even use an encoder. They're just using a manual timing system. Like, there's three timers there that alternate, and I think that's what sequences these piston engines. They don't actually use a sensor encoder system. That's kind of interesting. It's crazy how powerful these things are. I mean, they don't have to be, I guess, that powerful. They're only spinning props, but still, the wings mod does actually put up some resistance, and, uh... I'm surprised with a timing piston engine. I guess because there's no load on them, they'll always spin up to speed really quickly. But I've always done piston engines with encoders because, you know, if the, the load on the piston engine is too high and it's not spinning at the right RPM, then the timing won't do anything. So I'm curious if you'd load a timing engine, what would happen, but really, really cool stuff. I gotta really remake a piston engine plane at some point. Well, I gotta make better piston engines. That's the first thing. My piston engines are all really, really slow. Look at how smooth these ones are. That's what blows my mind. They have no skip. They're super clean. They're super smooth. There's no, like, offset torque. The props are just spinning super constant. Like, it's actually fantastic. So let's just come in slowly here for a landing. I feel like we can do it. This plane is unbelievably smooth. It's not fast, but, like, it's pretty smooth. Okay, land. Land sensors. Hello. There we go. Wheels. And touchdown. Wow. Wow, that's actually that's actually crazy. What a sick creation. All right, the next thing I want to look at is this QRC17 Class Steam Locomotive by Joe Train Gamer. Apparently, this has a working piston system here on the side to actually power the thing. Uh, I don't know. I don't think... No, it's... Oh, God. Dang, that is laggy. Oh, boy. All right, it looks like it's got guide wheels to go on a track. So let's see if we can do that. It is extremely laggy. I'm assuming I have to dub the physics down just a bit. Okay, well that's just that's just perfect. Let's try let's try the physics down one setting to simple eight. Oh yeah, that's so much better. Hopefully that doesn't break the uh, the piston setup. Look at that. Looks like it's actually got a timing loop too. Oh my god, this is ridiculous. So if this is if this actually is a timing loop, that means this will pivot up to change the pivot point to change the forward back. But let's uh, let's see if we can actually get this thing to to move. If this, that's insane if this has an actual timing system set up. So, all right, one. One seems to work. Oh my god, that's so good. Yeah, that's actually, that's actually insane. That's like a proper... I made a wall shirts um, gear system a long, long time ago. I recently spotted it in Scrap Mechanic. I showed it to Heist, but it didn't work. It, it, for some reason, the physics changed when I made it versus now. So I gotta go back and remake it. But look at that. That's so good. There's like a timing system there that goes in and out of the actual piston, which is what would control your valve gear, which would then actually push the main piston on the bottom there. So you press 1, 2, you can see it lowers that bar down, which then changes the pivot point to below. And look at that. It changes the timing. That's amazing. That's actually so good. Wow. Wow. I don't know, I don't think it's a real, yeah, so it's definitely just, wow, that is a lot of, a lot of bearings, that's insane. Okay, well, let's go forward. Three is a thruster? Is it like a thruster to help you go? I don't know, I don't know what that thruster does. Four is probably lights, lights, yeah, five. 
Or a nice little, like, multi-chime there. I don't know. Heist would know. Probably a three-chime. Oh my god, look, they've got a piston in the cab. That's so good. And then six is... I don't know what six is. Anything? I can't tell. This is great. I mean, it's not the fastest engine in the world. But it's really, really cool that this valve gear works. The only thing I will say about valve gear in Scrap Mechanic, which I really want to do at some point in time, is... Theor technically speaking, if you if you look at it, that top bar that slides in and out, that top bar would actually be opening and closing the valves to let the steam in to control the piston. So I'm not sure how this whole setup is controlling the piston or not. Like, oh, there is a sensor there. So maybe that thing sliding in and out is tripping the sensor. Because I was thinking, like, if you're going to make a valve gear perfectly realistic, that's what you need. You need to have a sensor that represents your quote-unquote steam pressure. And whenever the valve goes past the sensor, that's when it should activate the piston. I think that's what they're doing? I'm not sure. That's what it looks like, but oh my god, this thing is crazy. Aside from the lag, and you have to play it on simple 8, but that is, this is insane. It's so much detail. Alright, next thing I want to look at is not a piston engine at all, in fact, uh, but it is a Spooky Spider by Laser Sailor. Now, the description on this said that the kinematics of the legs were some of the most insane leg kinematics I would ever see. So let's turn the physics back up just to make sure it doesn't, you know, break or something. And apparently it follows you, is what this does. And it's got ridiculously good leg kinematics. I mean, the leg- the legs do look really good. I don't under- it's- it's gotta have some- oh my god. It's definitely got mod packs, so it's using smart engines to, like, move the legs. Holy cow, I don't even know what that- is. that's a brick of logic. I mean, these legs look really good. They, they really- they really do- what happens if I do this, though? If I permanently confused it? It just slowly creeps forward. This is really- oh, now I'm stuck in it. Okay, well- yeah, no, what the heck? Oh my god, why are they doing all this math? I mean, I guess you gotta do, like, just like with the robot arm, you gotta do leg kinematics for, I guess, every position, so I'm stuck. This is actually, this is a problem. I'm, I'm just gonna have to, I'm actually stuck. I can't get out of this. Okay, well, we're gonna have to delete our way out, unfortunately. Yeah, I know, I, I hope this wasn't important. Whatever that was, whatever that was, there we go. Can I just, there we go. Did I, did I lobotomize the spider? I think I lobotomized the spider. I'm curious about one thing. Does it turn with a suspension glitch or does it turn with the kinematics? I, I want to say it turns with the kinematics of its legs. But I can't really tell. It just, it's just, it's got an infinite distance tracker on it, obviously, because it can track us for so long. Is it, I can't tell if it's turning with a suspension glitch or not. I don't think it- no, it's not. No, you can see the leg. You can see the pivot point on the leg. That's so good. I don't even know how you do the math on this. But you can see the pivot point on the leg. It's rotating and spinning. It's rotating- if I go over here behind it, it's gonna do it like a tank turn, right? No, it strafes- oh my god, it always strafes turns. This is insane. I mean, I don't- I have- I couldn't even begin to understand what's going on with this logic. But this is a really good AI follower. 10 out of 10. Love it. I, I think it's creepy in a very creepy sort of way. I'd love to see the math that goes on to drive all these legs and actually figure out why, uh, yeah, what, what you're doing for the math. I mean, that's that's just so cool. All right, next I want to look at this Sussy Blue coupling car by Toby Wan with a Nugsy V8. I'm assuming this means they put uh, a V8 engine by Nugsy in it, or maybe I, I don't... To be honest, I don't know. There's a lot of engines on the Steam Workshop, and uh, but this car is called a Sussy Blue car, and I was I, I don't know why it's so sussy. I mean, I like that we've got just the V8 just sitting out in the open. That's fantastic. Um, okay. It's... Press 1 and it just... Oh my god, it just goes. Alright. Interesting. Look at that V8 cranking goes through a drive shaft. Oh my god, there are a lot of connection... Wait a minute, did I... I'm still on low physics. No, I'm on advanced physics. Okay. Uh, I don't know if we're gonna get over this. Let's try. And... Uh, no. All right, so I don't really know what's so uh, what's so sus about this car. I mean, it goes it goes forward. What what does two do? Oh, two switches it into reverse gear by switching the encoder position. See, I gotta do that on my piston edges too. Look, so you can see that front wheel is the encoder, right? And just by changing the position of the encoder, which I guess makes sense if you put it past. 
Oh my god, yeah, the sensors see it on the other side of the shaft, and then they rotate in the opposite direction. But even still, like, that's just, it's such a simple way to make a good piston engine. I don't know if this is, oh my god, yeah, and then they, look at all that freaking, it's not even, it's, I guess it's glitch welding. It's, uh, it's basically like welding a piston, and then you can attach a block inside of a piston, and that's where you get this super compact design from. I gotta learn how to do that, too. That's ridiculous. I, I definitely, there's so many things I gotta learn. Like, there's glitch welding in vanilla, and you could do a few glitch welding techniques to make really compact piston engines. But I, I've been told it doesn't affect the performance of the engine, because you still have the bearings, like the same number of bearings, which is really where the issues come from. But I mean, don't quote me on that. I have no idea. There's a whole community of scrap mechanic people that are crazy with piston engine setups. And I love the fact that I'm, I'm getting back into piston engines, because there's some really cool stuff you can build. But, uh, you guys gotta, like, give me the comment tricks, you know? Give me the tricks down in the comments below. I don't want to just have somebody spell it all out for me, but I like reading through the comments and getting, like, you know, one or two tricks every time I get a new comment. And it just makes each build a little bit better than the last. And then, you know, eventually we'll evolve ourselves into having a great, great piston engine setup. But this thing's not bad. I think it needs a differential. Does it have a diff on the back? Doesn't see. Is that a diff? What the heck? What what is that? It what the heck kind of transaxle is that? It's like this rotates, which would rotate wait, what? How does that work? Oh my god, that's so cool. That that is actually insane. It's like this one rotates, which means this whole ring has to go up and down, which then rotates that one. You'd never do this in real life because the friction is insane. But look at that. I can't believe that works. That's so cool. I think that's the sus the sus movement they were talking about, though. Still, that's a that's a really cool gearing system. Especially for scrap mechanic, because that only uses a couple bearings. I think like what, four bearings to make that work? That's a really, really sick system. That's awesome. I gotta yeah, we're gonna have to do some torque tests on that too. And compared out and then they've got i don't know what this is why there's so many bearings in the center axle but still really really cool builds all right i have another build that's probably going to destroy my game uh it's called a wgsn mixed freight train one by turner dito um i don't know oh my god this thing can't actually go on a track okay and my game destroyed itself perfect perfect let's go to physics eight simple eight okay Simple 8 is still laggy. That's how you know it's a good creation. There's also caution blocks between all the cars, so I'm not sure if we're supposed to disconnect them and then actually connect them together. Uh, maybe at some point in time. I don't know how you guys actually build this kind of stuff, because it is so much lag. Alright, we got all these caution blocks. Am I supposed to disconnect that? I feel like, I feel like I'm not. I don't see a latch mechanism if that uh, gets disconnected. I don't know. I think we're gonna- we're just gonna leave that. The engine's way up at the front here. This is insane. This is simple physics 8, and we're still barely getting 10 frames per second. I have no idea how you guys build this stuff. It's insane. Okay, so- oh, we got a hopper car. That looks cool. Does it open? Oh, look at that. Nice little opening hopper car. That's neat. We got a big diesel on the front here. Let's just hop on in. Of course, there's glitch welded stuff. That would make sense. So, let's just see what we've got in this thing oh my god all right uh okay well our door yeah i kind of figured this would happen this is what happens when you put the physics low is the doors don't work let's just we're just gonna clear that door out don't worry about it you're fine maintenance will deal with that on a different day oh my god this is so cool what the heck oh that's sick you can get down here and get out and there's a toilet this is actually super cool. I'm pretty sure this is like, isn't this the layout of normal diesels? They have like a bathroom in the front nose cone. Isn't that what Heist said? I'm pretty sure that's how they go. Okay, so press one, more lights, two, more lights, three, more lights, four. I don't know, more lights? More lights. Five. Big, big horn. Three chime. W goes forward. Actually moves. Six is, I don't know what six is doing. Oh, it's the front hitch. No, that's just dancing on its own. Seven is that front door. Eight, probably another door. And nine is probably another door. Yeah. Or inside cab lights. 
I mean, this thing, it goes. It gets going up to speed. I'm just going to keep holding W. I want to see if we can take this corner at full speed. The answer is definitely no. The answer is, oh my god. It is, it's so laggy though. I don't even know how you, wow. It's actually, we're just, okay, well, that was, it's kind of a good derailment. Well, a couple of them stayed on. That's, this is actually insane. Like, I don't know how you guys build stuff with this amount of detail. And then, and then, like, how you even, do you build it on simple five? Do you build it on simple six? Like, there's so much lag. Or maybe they built all the cars individually and then just attached them all together. That would actually make sense. That's how I would do it. All right, so we've got a hopper car. Let's open this thing up. This is like some, some kind of like a covered hopper car. Probably for like grain or something, I would assume. We've got a hay bale car. I don't know if we actually transport hay bales this way across trains, but maybe. Then we've got an oil cistern car. Which says Proco on it. I'm assuming this is for like, I don't know, probably like, if, if we're keeping with the theme of this train, I'm going to assume this is like a farm supply train. So this might be like a fuel oil thing or like, you know, like a cooking oil type deal. Uh, let's get up here. All right, we got a box car. Oh, I guess we don't need to get in. We can get in the box car. Let's check a look at this. This is insanely laggy. It is very, very difficult. A nice empty box car. All right, perfect. And then we've got another. Oh my goodness, just an empty flat car, like a open. What is it? An open hopper or whatever? Old school uh, hopper car. And then we've got another little hopper car at the back here. Wicked stuff. Crazy laggy. I don't know why this car is half yellow. Why is this car half yellow? That's interesting. Just a half half golden hopper. Huh. Alright, next thing I want to look at is by Toby Wan. This is a powered, it's a piston powered shopping cart. Shopping cart with a two speed gearbox, apparently. Um, so this is ridiculous. It's got, okay, so intro, look at that. Look at the, the distance on the cranks there. See, this is what people have been telling me about to make like a boxer engine where like you've got two sets of pistons on either side and you've got these really, really big cranks. So each crank is being pushed by two pistons at the same time and that like generates more torque. Plus look at the, the radius on that. Uh, but anyway, let's hop in this thing. It's a piston powered shopping cart. So does it go backwards too? All right, one cranks that engine up. Two cranks it in reverse. Three. Oh, it's like a... What is three? Three it. Oh wait, hold on. I gotta, I gotta, yeah, we gotta go back up to advanced physics. Three. It's like a clutch. There we go. Engages the gearbox. Okay. And then four. It's, the gearbox is a little stiff. This was probably built at a time when, you know, gearbox is meant to work. Oh, there we go. Four, oh no, four just permanently engaged it. Three is, yeah, three is like a clutch, it seems. I should probably read the controls. All right, four, and then five is, is five high speed. Oh my God, five is high speed. Look at that. Perfect. Holy cow, the power on that. This is, a, this is one of those gearboxes made with vanilla gears. I tried this before. Look at that top gear spinning. It's so cool. So it's got like a front and a back gear. I don't really know how he's switching between which gear is engaged. Um, that's kind of interesting. Like if we Hold on. If we turn this off, what can we see if we... So neither gear is engaged right now. If I press 4 or 5, 4... I don't understand how it's picking which gear is engaged. It's, like, it's almost like those gears are... There's two controllers in there. And the controllers, oh, the controllers must be like locking against some some bearing to determine if this gear is active or this gear is active. And if this one's active, it meshes this way. And if this one's active, it meshes this way. So this way would be like a one a gear ratio with a big gear to a small gear, probably an eight to a four, so like a two to one. And then this way is a one to two, like in the opposite direction. That would be my guess. That's what it looks like is happening. I don't know how the controller is like locking which one in place, but that, I think that's what's going on. Yeah, I need to make an engine exactly like that. If you're going to maximize torque, that's what you need. You need four on either side. You need them so that each each piston has a huge crank and each crank is being powered by two pistons simultaneously from two different sides. I mean, that's, that's how you generate torque, 100% without any gears and then you gear it down with a treble at a one to two or whatever and then it's just hilarious so we'll have to we'll have to do that and then hook it up to the dyno at some point but these boxers man that's uh that's crazy and then of course 
using that piston trick again to jam them all together. I'm gonna kind of make mine more expanded because I don't know all the glitch welding tricks, but this is wicked cool. All right, so I want to look at this hover car by Uni Platypus, and um, you guys may or not know, I used to be really big into making hovercraft stuff way back in the day, um, all completely in vanilla. And I, I tried building like a whole hover city and things and I had all these different platforms that would connect and they had logic to talk to each other and blah, blah, blah. And so this is apparently a completely vanilla hover car, which is kind of cool. And I should make hovercraft as well because um, there's some cool hovercraft stuff you can do, especially with like suspension and stuff and tilted sensors and things. And that's exactly what this looks like. Oh my God, you hit two and that opens up. That's so cool. How you get out. This is, this is the car of the future right here. All right, so you press one. Yeah, look at that. They've got suspension on the thrusters, which just, look at that. It keeps it super stable. It turns super stable. It goes forward. Yeah, look at it. That's so cool. So the thing with the suspensions is if you have the suspension on the thruster, it kind of helps dampen the thrust. So you, you end up with a much smoother flight pattern. I never really did this a whole lot with my hovercraft. I would always kind of just make them on, on rigid sensor systems. I'd use two sensors per corner, so it'd be like, if you see it on the one sensor, you'd activate, but this is using only one sensor per corner. Oh no, it's got four. Never mind, it does. Oh, it's got, never mind, he's got a bajillion sensors. All right, well now. So we're gonna be screwed here. They won't see the water, so yeah. But that's okay, because it's a hover car. It can just come out of the water. That's so cool. That's it's ridiculously smooth. But I remember building hovercraft in vanilla and they were always super janky and it was always really hard to do. Back when like scrap mechanic was first a thing, it was like no one could build hovercraft. It was so tough to make good hovercraft. And now people figured all these suspension tricks. And I remember when the suspension glitch was like first discovered and it was this crazy thing. And now it's just second nature for everybody to use them. So really, really cool car. I gotta make, I gotta make more hovercraft. I can't believe how smooth this is. I gotta make hovercraft with magnets too. That's a real tough challenge. You want, you wanna, I know there's a few people who have done some stuff on the workshop with it, but magnets are just impossible to control. They're not like thrusters at all. The only thing I wish is that I really wish survival had better fuel for thrusters because this has, you know, like what, like 10, 20 thrusters on it. Some, it's got a pretty large number of thrusters. And if you were to try and power this in survival, you'd burn through, you know, thousands of fuel in 10 seconds. And that sucks because it would be really cool to have some proper flying and, and hovering creations in survival mode. And it's the one thing that the devs never really did properly with the resource balance. You can't build something like this in survival mode. You'll just, you'll just run out of gas. So really, really cool stuff though. I love this build. It's super cool. All right, I got one last creation I want to look at, and that's this extra muscular muscle car by Vigard Epic. And uh, I mean, I just had to spawn this because I, I, it looks like a, a normal muscle car, whatever. But look at this. Like, what is this? This is this is ridiculous. Like, what? It, what is this? But you've got three pistons per cylinder. It's like a four cylinder. It's an inline four with three pistons per. I like. I don't know why. And then this. I this looks like some sort of a gear, but it, maybe it's just a clutch. I don't know what that is. Either way, we got two buttons. One turns this bad boy on, and two does nothing. W engages the clutch. Oh my god, look at that. It even torques! The whole frame twists! That's so cool. That's ridiculous. Oh my god, so it's WS. I don't know what- Oh, two is a radio. Okay, well that's fine. WS controls, like, when it engages the piston edge. Look at the torque on that, though. That's actually ridiculous. Like, what the heck is going on here? Okay, so what's WS actually- Hold on, if I let go, what are we actually engaging with that? Where W and S engage what? Something. Oh, a controller over here. And this controller engages these three things there, which do what? What do those do? This is another toilet gearbox. Again, it's got another toilet gear. Those W, S, what are they? What are, I don't understand what those engage. Those spin these things to activate a sensor, which then does something. Oh my god, there's so much glitched into each other. It's really hard to tell and dissect these builds. So this is a, this is a clutch of some kind, I guess. It's a gear, but oh, it goes two to one. Okay, so it's a gear. So that's a gear that goes down. I don't know how people are engaging. Oh, it's engaging back here. 
This is this. Wait, what? How is that? How does that? See, there's some weird glitch stuff going on in here. Because look, this is spinning. This piston spinning full speed. This sh inner shaft is spinning, but this this shaft is not. So somehow these and these bearings are. There's like two bearings in and of each other with a. Oh my god, it's like an electric engine. Is it one of those things like if you engage the electric engine, then it transfers power, but if you don't, it doesn't. There is some voodoo. But look, there's like two bearings stacked on each other. I don't know how you guys figure this stuff out. But yeah, that is that is some weird electric engine clutch system going on there. But unbelievable the torque this thing generates. It's not even a boxer either. That's just an inline, that's just an inline four with three cylinders per. That's so ridiculous. That's so cool. You guys are gonna have to explain to me some stuff in the comments down below. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna work slowly through the piston engine building process. I'm probably gonna work on a new piston engine here pretty soon and you know try and build that up. And I expect you guys to just invade the comment sections with all the things I'm doing wrong and all the pointers and tricks to make it better. And I think that'll be really, really cool. I really enjoy reading through the comments and getting like, you know, one or two tips because then it just makes me learn at a slower pace. I find if I just if someone were to try and hand me all the things, I wouldn't really be learning how to do it myself. I'd more be just like, you know, it kind of like lecturing and regurgitating information, right? It would be like, oh, here's a here's a, a math test. Just memorize all the answers and you'll be fine. But that doesn't really teach me how to get to those answers in the first place. So that's why I like learning from the comments one at a time. But uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And yeah, of course, uh, you know, we're gonna we're gonna get into more piston engines again. They're really cool these mechanical things, but uh, the more I'm diving into these best builds that you guys are submitting, the more I'm realizing that I am just so inadequate at building piston engine stuff. This thing's insane. Like, that's, that's so good. And like, the clutch system with the, the glitched in, I, I don't even know what that's doing. That's some voodoo stuff that I've never even heard of. But uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Make sure you hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and we'll see y'all next time.